Hi everyone, welcome to the very first ever comma Black Belt Canada class done over YouTube Live. So I just wanted to say thanks so much for joining me for this training today. I understand that we're definitely in uncharted territory. I mean, in all my years of martial arts, in all my years of life, I have never been through anything like this, and I'm sure you could say the same. But here's the thing. We're black belts. We love challenges. And this is a challenge, and we can get through this as well. So the big thing that I want you to keep, that I want you to keep in mind as we uh, begin to go into some training today is first and foremost, you can look at anything as an opportunity. So this time that you have away from school, from work, from the dojang, uh, this is an opportunity for you to continue to get better in your martial arts skills. It's an opportunity for you to maybe get caught up on some of the requirements that maybe you're a little bit behind on. The expectation that we have of you is that you continue your training to your black belt test. Now, I've spoke with Master Luff this week. We still don't know what's going to be going on, like many of us don't. Uh, but right now, the tentative plan is that the schools would be reopened on March 30th. We don't know if that's going to happen, but that's our plan. If, in fact, that's what we can do, then the rest of our plan for black belt testing on April 11th will be just as we planned. If not, we're going to have to readjust. That's just part of what we're going to have to do. So I really appreciate you being patient with us at this time. Trust me, um, myself, Master Luff, the entire staff at all the schools, Master Vicky, uh, Master Nick, uh, Master Turnquist, we are all doing the very best we can to make sure that we're providing you the best service in these very, very unusual times. But the fact of the matter is, is we're black belts and we get through this, and it all depends on your attitude and that Pilsung spirit that we talk about all the time. So when we bow and we say Pilsung, that means certain victory. That means I can do it. And that means whatever obstacles we have in front of us, we're going to do our best to move through it. So that's what I want you to be thinking about today. Now, I'm coming to you from my basement. This is, uh, this is the room where uh, if, you, if I had my camera on this side, you'd see my, my desk and this is where I have my office. This is also where I do a lot of my own training. So this is not a, um, a room that's, uh, that's, foreign, to having, um, that's have, uh, foreign to having working out. I've got a, a weight, uh, weight bench over on this side, and if I turn the camera, you see a heavy bag over here. So you're going to be joining me for this training in my training environment when I train on my own. And now when you're at your house, you have an opportunity to do the same. So what I thought we'd do today is we do a little bit of warming up in terms of our basic skills that we do at every class. So our traditional basics, some basic kicking techniques. And then what I thought I would do is we'd go over probably about three or four elements of your curriculum. We'll go over some step sparring, and I've got some unique ways for us to do that. Um, we'd also do some, um, uh, do some scream of sticks, and I've got a unique way for, for me to teach you that as well. Time permitting, we may or we may not go into our kickboxing drills, and then also you're going to get an assignment to work on some of your forms. So my intention is to spend about 25 to 30 minutes with you right now to take you through this workout, and uh, we'll go from there. So anyway, welcome. Glad to have you here, uh, and let's get started. So we're going to start first with traditional basics. Now, my basement doesn't have enough space in it for us to do line drills all the way down. So what we're going to do is we're going to do them in such a way where we're going to stay stationary. We're going to be stepping out and stepping back in order to do these traditional basics. Now, I'm going to do my best, where it's possible, to do this in a mirrored image for you. So when I step forward like this with my right hand, it's going to be as if you were stepping with your left which is what we always ask you to do. So in most cases, I'm going to be doing that so we can make sure that we are on the proper sides. All right? So let's get started. So, chariot and kung ye, pilsang, chumbi position. Here we go. Traditional basics. First with the front punch. Raise your right hand, left hand at the hip, and step forward. One, and back. Two, back. Three, back. Four, and back, five, and back, six, back, seven, back, eight, back, nine, back, and ten. Good, and bring it back, and relax. Now, we don't have the full floor space like we normally do, so what I want you to really focus on today is proper technique. 
And remember at the very first time when we started working together back several weeks ago when I took over the candidacy class, we had one word that we used as our mantra, and that was precision. So as we move through these techniques, we're not gonna go and do a lot of them, we're not gonna do them super fast, but I want you to think about being precise. Being precise. So now let's go to the second technique, which is a low block into a front punch. So chumbi position, make sure the hand comes straight up to the ear, non-hand, non-blocking hand is down, step forward, low block, and reverse punch, and back. And block, and punch. Three, boom, punch, good. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, and back, relax. Now, I'm not gonna do the key up, but you can do the key up at home. Assuming you don't have anybody that's asleep, you're gonna wake up, all right? But I'm gonna be speaking to you and kind of giving you some corrections, but where it's appropriate for you, make sure you use your best key up. Next, we're gonna to go to the high block into the high punch. Now remember, when you throw that high block and you bring it up here, we wanna have this good bend in our elbow so that anything overhead slides off. We don't want the hand here, we want the hand here. We also don't want the elbow bent at 90 degrees. It's more at 45 degrees. Then that punch is gonna come right underneath the nose. It's called the philtrum. It's like the mustache. So those two knuckles can fit right underneath the nose. Let's try it out. High block, high punch. One, block and punch. Good, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and return. Shia, relax. Well done, well done. Remember as we're doing the front stance techniques, that we're keeping our hips square, our front leg is bent, our back leg is straight, and our shoulders are square as well. We wanna make sure when we're punching that the center line of their body is our target. Remember, if it's a middle punch, it's to the solar plexus. If it's a high punch, it's to the philtrum. And we wanna make sure is if you bring your hands together, you have an equal distance on for both arms, like an isosceles triangle even on both sides. We don't want to be punching here or here, but right in the center or right to the high position. Okay, now let's go to outside block, reverse punch. Outside block, reverse punch. So it should be position. And one, block, punch. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and return. Well done. When we're doing that middle block, we want to make sure the elbow is bent. Nice bend here, wrist is straight, so that you have a full block coming across to block against a hooking type punch. Well done, well done. Next of our basics is gonna be the inner forearm block. Now when we do this, we wanna make sure that if this is the center line of our body, that block comes across the center line. Then we'll deliver two punches. Comes across the center line, and then two punches. Let's give it a try. Chumbi position. Here we go. One, block, punch, punch, and back. Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, and return. Well done, well done. Now in this next series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be moving from a front stance, or excuse me, yeah, from a, from a back stance to a front stance. So it's really gonna be important that we have good body positioning. Our feet are in the shape of a capital L. So if you could see my heels here, they're together. I take one step, two, three and a half. And then I sit down in the stance. Heels are in alignment. In this, we're gonna do an outside inner forearm block. Fist is eye level. Then we're open to a front stance, right here. So once again, if you see it from the side, it's gonna be one and two. All right, let's try it out. Chumbi position, outside inner forearm block, in a back stance, and then open up to a front stance. Ready, one, block, punch, and return. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Return and relax. Well done. One more combination. One more combination. This is going to be the knife hand garden block into the reverse punch. Now remember, we've talked about this quite a bit. We want to make sure that our hand position on the knife hand is correct. So what do we want to think about? Number one is do this right here with your hands. See this curve? that I have with my hands. Now, make these three fingers the same size by bending, and now this thumb bends here. So the knife edge is exposed. Thumb is not touching, nor is it here. It's here away from the hand, all right? So same type of step. We're gonna be stepping first with a back stance into our knife hand garden block, and then move into the reverse punch. So here we go. One, hands up, one, and two. Good, go. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And 10. And puddle. Shia, relax. Well done. Now remember, when we do these, each and every time you're doing a traditional technique, you have a striking arm and you have a reaction arm. So when that punch goes out, this hand is high at the hip and they come out and back simultaneously, right? What you want to be doing is making sure that you're moving and they're coming together as a group. It's not like this where they're separated. They come together in smooth transition. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of kicking right now, our basic kicks that we do each and every Saturday, but we're not gonna be good at going down the line. So when we do these kicks, I'm just gonna demonstrate this here and then I'm gonna count them out. We're gonna be staying in place. I'm assuming most of you have a limited area, you don't have a full 2,000 square foot training area. So what you're gonna be doing is actually staying in place and alternating feet. Now, when you're doing this, I still want you to concentrate on snapping those arms into your guarding stance so that you're getting that workout in and it becomes muscle memory for you. So the first one we're gonna do is our front kick. We're gonna be alternating front kicks. So we're gonna start in a guarding stance here our back leg, in your case, your right leg, I've got my left leg back so that we can mirror this, and you go here, kick, and back. Kick, and back. Kick, 
and back, kick and back. One more, kick and back, kick and back. All right, I didn't kick you, did I? All right, here we go. So I'm gonna count these out. Each count, one kick, then step back. Ready, trivia position. Step back, guarding stance. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give me two more. Eleven, twelve. Now in your guarding stance here, let's see the double punch with the key up. Go. One, ha, here. And come back to Chumbi. Well done. Well done. Got your heart pumping, didn't it? All right, here we go. Now next we're gonna be doing our step up side kick. Remember with the side kick that we wanna make sure that we have one straight line between our shoulder, our hip, and our heel. So when that foot comes up, it's straight here with the heel, toes are slightly down. Okay, we're gonna be in our stance here. Hands up this way. We're gonna step up, boom, and kick, and back, kick and back, kick, and back, kick, and back. Make sure you're aiming with the heel, boom, and back. Here we go, step up side kick, ready? One, that's it, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, double punch, oh, yeah! and jump switch, oh, yeah! very good. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna do it with the other leg. Going now with the right leg, I've got my left leg forward. You're gonna be in this stance here. Remember, you're gonna slide up, make sure that you have an L step. So your feet are like this as they step up and aiming with that heel. So you'll come here, boom, and kick, and back. Boom, and kick, and back. Boom, and kick, and back. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and come back to Chumbi. And Shia, relax. All right, whose heart's pumping? All right, mine is too, that's good. So we wanna make sure during this time, even though we're inside and we're doing a lot, we wanna do things to get our heart pumping so that we're used to, when we get back to training, we're not gonna lose our conditioning. Spend time each day working on your cardiovascular. Make sure that you are spending time where the heart's pumping, whether it's calisthenics, whether it's kicks, whether it's kickboxing combinations, so that you're staying in the best shape you can. Let's move to the roundhouse kick now. The same type of stepping that we did with the front kick. So we're gonna be in our guarding stance here, and now we're gonna go with the back leg here, kick and step back into this position. Kick and back, kick and back, kick and back, kick and back, kick and back. Here we go, back leg round kick. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do two more. Eleven, twelve. How about two more? Thirteen. 14, and Paro, come back to Chumbi, and Xia, high five. Well done, everybody, well done. Okay, we've got our axe kick. Now the axe kick is gonna be the same type of footwork that we did with the roundhouse kick. This axe kick is gonna come from the outside and down here. So when I throw this kick, I'm gonna turn the body here, boom, and have it snap down, and then back here, kick and here, kick, and here, all right? Back leg, axe kick, ready? Chumbi position, step back guarding stance, and one, two, three, 
four, five, keep going, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and come back to Chumbi. And shia, relax. All right, we've got one more kick. And that's our turning back kick. Now you've heard me say it time and time again that when we throw this turning back kick, we have to turn our upper body first. So when we start in this position, the head, the shoulders, the hands, the hips, they turn here. So you can see right over this, right over this eye here. And then boom, bam, the kick comes out from here and then turn. Same thing here, turn, looking over this way, looking over your shoulder, bam, and the kick comes here. All right, so turning back kick, this is our last 10, let's do it. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, 10. And back to Chumbi. And attention, and bow, all right. Quickly, go get yourself a drink of water. Come on back. We're gonna work on one step sparring. I'm gonna grab some water too. Is that all right with you? All right. So, let's get back into place for our one step sparring. Now, remember we've talked an awful lot about the importance of making sure we have proper distancing with our partners. So when you start, you're gonna start here and touch fists so that your arms are out here, that's gonna be your proper distancing. The person attacking, now that's gonna be me today, is gonna to step back in a guarding stance and let out a great key up. Oh yeah! From here. When you key up, I'm gonna step forward, boom! I'm gonna throw the punch. I guess I'll go look at, make it look a little higher so it looks like it's coming right at your face, right there. Now, the first technique that you're gonna be doing for the Chodan bows is you're gonna be doing technique number one, you're gonna to step to the inside in a palm block right here, palm block in a horse stance. Then you're gonna punch one, punch two, and punch high, and then come back to Chumbi. So let's do that again slowly. Ready, step here, palm block with a knife hand. Bring the film here a little bit, and then punch one, middle, to the ribs, punch two to the ribs, punch high to the head, and come on back. So, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be attacking you. Now, remember, we have to have proper technique. So you wanna be in that best horse stance you can, and I'm gonna be in the best front stance I can. And if not, and if we don't, we're gonna to have to drop and do five push-ups. all right? So here we go. I'm attacking you. As soon as I hear your key up, I'm coming at you. And even if I don't hear you, I'm coming at you. All right, so I'm in chumbi position. I step back, technique number one. And you come here, boom, and go, block. Punch, 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 and back. Good, let's do it again, ready? Ayah, go, boom, block, punch, 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 and back. One more time, Ayah, here it is, boom, block, punch, 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 and back. Well done, well done. Technique number one, now we're gonna go to technique number two. Technique number two. You're gonna be stepping from chumbi position and doing an inside block here. Inside block like this, just like in Chung Mo Hyang. Inside block one, back fist two, and boom! Reverse punch to the solar plexus. Let's do it again together. Inside block one, back fist, and punch. All right, here we go. That's technique number two. I'm coming at you. Block. Back fist punch and back. Again. Here it is. Block. Back fist punch. Good. Make sure you're turning your hips so when you're sideways on the back fist, you're straight ahead on the front punch or reverse punch. Let's do it one more time. Here it is. Boom. Block. Back fist punch and back. And relax. Well done. Well done. High five. Last one for the Compulsory techniques. Now we do technique number three. Now technique number three, it's gonna be a little difficult for me to do it here. I'm gonna do my very best to walk you through, but my space is a little bit tight. We're gonna be here. We're gonna come in one, palm block here. Then we're gonna spin, elbow strike to the ribs, boom. 
back fist. Reach, grab the collar, grab the collar with the right hand, grab the shoulder with the left, sweep and punch. Aya! Here. All right, let's do that again. Ready, one, spin, two, three, grab, sweep, punch. Aya! All right, are you ready? By the way, I can't let you take me down because I got a desk right here and I'd land right on it. So we'll just have to pretend. All right, here we go. Technique number three. Aya! Help! Block, spin, elbow, back fist, sweep, and punch. Well done, let's do it again. Aya! Here it is. Boom! Block, spin, elbow, back fist, sweep, and punch. One more time. Aya! Go! Boom! Block, spin, elbow, back fist, sweep, punch, and well done. High five, partner. Good job, good job. And you didn't even hurt me. That's excellent. You each have a creative one-step sparring you developed. So, I don't know what it is. I can't teach it to you, but here's what we're going to do. I want you to center yourself here for a moment, and I'm going to do this three times, and you are going to do your creative one-step sparring. All right? So take a moment, get your breath, think about what you're going to do, and we want to make sure these are as realistic as possible. So even though we're not in the same place, I want you to pretend almost like you're, I don't know, a Jackie Chan movie or something, right? You are giving your very best effort. All right, so here we go. Your creative one-step sparring, we're gonna do it three times. Here's the first one. Aya! Here it is. Go! Oh, good, good, good job. And back. Nice. Technique, let's do it again, second time. Ready? Aya! Here it is. Boom, go! Beautiful, beautiful. All right, man, I'm glad I'm not there. You'd probably be hurting me. Okay, last time now, make this your best one. Your creative one step number number one, the only one you have to do. Here it is. Aya! Here it is. Boom, go. Come on, come on. That's it, that's it. And return. Attention and bow. Good job, partner. All right, I need you to go grab your sticks. Go grab your sticks. And I'm going to grab mine as well. Now, of course, we're not going to be able to do this with each other in terms of real life. But what I want to do is I want to work on the pattern and the stepping. So when we do our first double Sinawali, sticks are going to be up here. And I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see my feet. But the way the footwork is going to work is we're going to step as we hit here and then down. Then up, one, two and notice how my feet are coming together and going out and when i'm here it's one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four everyone got that all right so here we go we're going to do uh four count double sinawali then we're going to go to six count and then we're going to go to redondo all right so everyone attention and bow Sticks up. Okay, you're gonna do this with me now. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Stay with me. That's it. Make sure you're moving your feet. Turning your body sideways. Come on, a little faster. That's it, come on. Stay with it. Stay with it. 10 more seconds. Come on, stay with me. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Beautiful job, beautiful job. Did you hear the, the sticks clicking? I did. Excellent job, everybody. Now we're gonna go to six count. Now when we do six count, the footwork is a little different. In four count, we stepped out to the side. Each time we did the technique. On six count, the footwork is going to do this. As I'm moving the sticks, I'm just turning my center line to the side so I'm not exposing it to my partner. We're going to start in an over under position and it's going to be one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Good, good, now, 
Let's try this again. We're going to come here a little closer. I kind of made a mistake there when I stepped out, so make sure you don't do what I did. Make sure you stay sideways. And let's every, just turn your hips like this right now. That's what we want. That's what we want. All right, so let's start slowly. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now turn the hips. Good. Good. Now when you do this, and you come here with this strike, you got to make sure that this one is underneath. And then hit and hit. And one, two, three. 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 Well done. Well done. Our last stick combination is redondo. Now, when we're doing redondo, we want to think about patterns of three. It's almost like a figure eight. And it's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we're going to start in the same position. And we're going to strike down, down, down. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, as you're doing this, you're getting a spin. Just hit my desk there. You're getting a spin happening. And watch this from the side. It's almost like a big wheel that you see rotating. And notice how my hips are turning as you do this. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go redondo, and we're gonna do it. I'm looking for a clock here. We're gonna do it for as long as I say. And in the last 15 seconds, we're gonna really burn it. So let's start in this position, over under position. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Now get the rhythm. Get the rhythm and turn the hips. That's it. Good. A little faster. A little faster. Here we go. Even faster. Let's go. Come on. Ten seconds left. Five, four, three, two, and one. Great job, partner. Way to go. Way to go. So that's what I had planned for you today. We went over our traditional basics, our basic seven. We went over our basic kicking techniques. Then we practiced our one-step sparring. And remember, when you're doing that one-step sparring, proper body positioning, proper distancing. And then we went over our sticks. So again, you can practice the sticks on your own. Or maybe even teach your mom and dad how to do the sticks. But remember the footwork. When you're doing four count, you're stepping out. When you're doing six count and redondo, you're turning the side. So that's what I had for you today, folks. Oh, except for one thing. You're not done training. Now that you're all warmed up, I don't have enough room to do it down here in my basement. But I'm sure you can find some space. I need you to do three repetitions of each one of your forms. Now, here's the thing. Our code word for the beginning of the training was precision. So what I want you to do is I want you to do your first repetition with amazing precision. That means everything is super slow and you step out in an amazing stance, kick, and then you slowly do your movement to make sure everything is in perfect alignment. It's not done fast. It's done very slow and precisely. So take some time after each technique to make sure your hands are in the right position, your, your feet are in the right position, and then before you go to the next technique, stop and look at each technique. Don't just go through it to get it done. Make sure it's precise. Then your second repetition, you're gonna do this for each one of your forms. The second repetition, I want you to do basically at half to three quarter speed. So now what happens is you're putting a little bit of pop and snap into everything that you're doing. And then on your last one, you're doing it full speed, full key up, but keeping that same precision of movement. All right, so make sure that your stances are great, your body position is great, your breathing is great. Everything is the very best you can do. So you're gonna do all four of your forms. Take a Yukjang, take a Chiljang, take a Paljang and Chungmuhyam and do the first, do them in precise, very slowly. Then the second rep is about three quarters speed, and then the last one is the very best you can do. 
So guys, it's been my pleasure to be here with in this class. I got my, a little workout in today as well. So thanks for joining me on this. And until we know what's going on, we'll just continue to do these for our weekend classes. It'd be my intention that we could get these down on, um, on a Friday so you can either work them on Friday or Saturday morning, but make sure that you've done this workout before noon every Saturday. So we have a little bit of flexibility in the time, but we wanna make sure you're staying uh, training. So if in fact testing does land on the 11th of April as we planned, you're ready to go and you haven't missed a beat. So once again, this has been Grandmaster Chris Natsky with your Black Belt Candidate uh, class for Black Belt Candidate class. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great weekend.